Welcome back to the decision tree module. Let's look at some of the properties of decision trees. This was the data of the students that we've been working with in this module. And our task has been to predict which students will and will not play cricket. We saw that we can split the population into sub nodes based on the available features. Let's say for now that this is the first split on feature number one. We can further split these nodes to have more sub nodes let's say on feature number two and feature number three. And this split can keep on increasing. Or we can say that the tree will keep on growing if we do not set any constraint on it. If there's no constraint on the tree, it can grow until each observation of the data has separate leaf nodes or until it is completely pure. In such a case, the model will fit perfectly on the training observations and will get a 100% training accuracy. While that might sound ideal, if we try the same model on unseen data, there's a very good chance you might not get similar performance. And hence, we can say that decision trees can lead to overfitting. We've already seen overfitting before. If you want to review your concept of overfitting, I recommend you to watch the video that we covered earlier and then move ahead with this course. As I've mentioned, decision trees can achieve a perfect score on training data. But the performance on validation data or the test data might not be as good. In fact, there's a good chance that in the real world, it will not be as good. So to prevent overfitting, there are multiple solutions available. One of them is that we can set a threshold around the depth of the tree, which means we're controlling the growth of that tree. For example, in this case, I'm setting the maximum depth to one, which means my tree will not grow beyond this point. And setting that hard constraint, the model will not be able to learn the pattern of the data. And its performance, even on the training data, might not be good enough. And this problem is called underfitting. So while working with decision trees, we must try to prevent both of these problems, underfitting as well as overfitting. But then, what would be the solution to these problems? Let's discuss some tips that you can keep in mind when you're building a decision tree model to make it more generalized. We can set some constraints so that the tree will not grow beyond a certain limit. Now there can be various methods to constrain the tree size and we'll look at them one by one. First, we can set a constraint on the minimum samples for a node split. Here we set a constraint that a node will only split into sub nodes if it has a certain number of samples. Let's say this is a fully grown tree and we set minimum samples for a node split as 10 and this is the population. As there are more than 10 samples in this node, it will split further. Now both of these sub nodes do have 10 samples. So the splitting will continue. In this case, none of the nodes have 10 samples. That's why there'll be no further split and the tree will not grow any further. This is how setting the minimum samples for a node split works. Setting a higher value of minimum samples for split helps to control overfitting. But keep in mind that if you set this value too high, it can conversely lead to underfitting and the model will not learn anything at all. So you can try with different values and then pick the value which gives you the best result. The second way is to set the minimum samples for a terminal node. A node will be considered as a terminal node if it has specified minimum number of samples. Let me explain this using an example. Let's say we have set the minimum samples for a terminal node as 5, as you can see in this case. And this is how the tree looks like after splits. Now here the nodes marked with green color satisfy the condition as they have a minimum of 5 samples and hence they will be treated as leaf or terminal nodes. But the red node that you can see here, it only has 3 samples. It cannot be considered as a leaf node. So its parent node will become the leaf node. And hence this will be the final tree after setting the minimum samples for terminal nodes as 5. We've seen that we have controlled the growth of the tree by setting a minimum sample criterion for terminal nodes. If we set a high value for this, it will definitely help to control overfitting. But again, a word of caution, 
setting a very high value could lead to underfitting problems. Let's say we set the minimum samples for a leaf node to be 20. As all the red nodes here have less than 20 samples, they will not be considered as the leaf nodes. So we are not able to split the root node at all into any further subnodes. Our model will not learn the patterns and hence setting this too high can lead to underfitting. And we should choose a value which is not too high and not too low. Another way is to set the depth of the tree till which it should grow and once the tree has grown to that defined depth, it will stop the splitting process. Let's again take this example and assume that you set the maximum depth to 2. In this node, the depth of the tree is 0 as it hasn't yet grown. So we'll go ahead and split the population. We get this after the first split. The depth of this tree is 1, which is less than the maximum depth which we've defined as 2. So what do you think will happen next? That's right, the decision tree will continue to split. And we finally achieved the depth of 2 that we've defined. So the tree will stop here and won't grow any further. This is how max depth constrains the tree size. If you set a higher max depth, it can lead to overfitting. Whereas setting the max depth to low will lead to underfitting. You can intuitively imagine how that will work. When we set the max depth here as 1, the model will not learn many patterns and there's a good chance it might underfit. So depending on the problem, you can set the max depth to prevent overfitting or underfitting. We can also set the maximum number of terminal nodes. And if after splitting, we have more terminal nodes than the specified number, it will stop the splitting process and the tree will not grow beyond that point. Let's say we set the maximum terminal nodes as 2 in this case. Since there's only one node, it will allow the tree to grow further. After the first split, we can see that there are two nodes now. And we've said the maximum terminal nodes is 2. So the tree will stop and will not grow beyond this point. This is how setting the maximum terminal nodes work and it can help us to prevent overfitting. So I can say that by setting these parameters, we have a trade-off between overfitting and underfitting, exactly what we want to achieve as data scientists. In the next video, things are going to get very exciting. We're going to build a decision tree in Python using all these parameters that we've learned and we look at the training and validation accuracy. So it's time to get our hands dirty and build a decision tree in Python. So I'll see you in the next video. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.